So you don't need sub D to get organic shapes in Blender. A lot of people seem to think you have to do subdivision surface modeling to get those nice curvy shapes you don't. I'm going to show you a few different solutions that do not require sub D. I think you'll enjoy them. So let's hop right into it. Also, if you're new to hard surface in Blender and want to learn a little bit more about how everything works, pick up our hard surface ebook on our site. It's completely free, has a lot of cool different workflows in there for you to learn from. So today we're going to just start creating some organic looking shapes without sub D. Now my first and probably most favorite way to get organic shapes is using intersection booleans. I'll show you a good example here. So I'm just going to make a cylinder, give it a good amount of segments, and we'll um, rotate it so like this, and then do something like this, and then we'll do something like this. It's kind of rotating the cylinder here. Cool. Now, the way intersection booleans work is they basically take an area that both share. Whatever similar, you know, volume of these two pieces are shared is what will, you know, yield the intersection boolean. I'm probably not explaining that well. Basically, what you can do, as long as you have hard ops or the bool tool add-on enabled, like that. You can press control and then the little um, multiplication symbol, start whatever it is, on the uh, numpad. And what this is going to do is it's going to take the shared space between both and that's all that's going to remain. So what I could actually do here is I could start kind of, you know, rotating this and playing, you know, the different positioning and just kind of see, you know, what type of results am I getting here. I could rotate this like up this way, get some cool looking form. And this is a really cool way to kind of experiment with the different shapes and forms that you might not otherwise be able to get very easily. So if the shading goes, you know, crazy, what you can do is just adjust the auto smooth here. So I'll just drop that to like, I don't know, 30 degrees. And now we kind of have this cool looking shape. Now you're going to notice the shading is also pretty bad. So if I go in here, you can see these really nasty shading streaks. What you want to do to fix that is you want to go to the base cylinder here and give it a good amount of loops to support all that geometry or to kind of push the shading in and then what you want to do is you want to take this cutter piece as well and give this piece a lot of loop cuts too and then once you do that basically what's going to happen is you're going to have um, pretty minimal shading errors maybe a little bit around the edge but that's fine and you're going to have an overall uh, fairly clean result so this is how you can get like a few different types of organic shapes. You just keep kind of playing with this. You can even turn off overlays and just kind of, you know, rotate and just see what types of shapes you can get just using, you know, simple intersection balloons. Really cool, really powerful strategy. I'd recommend trying it out. Now, the next way to do this is with what we call a lattice. So what we can do is so we can scale this a little bit and maybe scale this a little bit. Then what we can do is give this some supporting geometry, so some loops here, here, and here, so nothing crazy. And then what we can do is we can use a lattice. So what I'm going to do is press Shift A, we're going to go to lattice, and all we really have to do with the lattice is kind of like, you basically just scale this until it's the same size, okay? Then you take the base piece, whatever you're using, you add a lattice modifier and then you choose the lattice. Now, lattice, if you press, um, if you go here, there's gonna be a resolution UVW, which is basically XYZ for lattice. So if I increase U, you can just call it X, it's the same thing. It's going to increase the segment count on the X axis and then same for the Y and then Z. Now in lattice, I don't like to use necessarily too many um, you don't need too many segments. It kind of depends what you're going for, but check this out. Now that I have some supporting geometry on the X axis, I can actually take different areas of this piece here on the lattice and I can, you know, kind of deform it, manipulate it. I can just kind of play with this whole entire shape. Now, if, um, you know, it looks a little bit blocky, what you can always do is subdivide this a few more times. So it has more resolution Maybe even again, like that. And now you're gonna see it's a lot more bendy, a lot more fluid. So you can really get in here and just kind of manipulate with the shape and see what types of different results you uh, you end up getting. Really cool, 
really powerful technique and you also want to make sure you shade it smooth and turn on your auto smooth. So although sub D is a very powerful modeling strategy, it is not always required to get these organic clean forms. I use lattice and intersection booleans pretty frequently. Well, kind of. <laughs> That's probably a lie, but I do use them here and there. Uh, but sub D can also be a very powerful technique as well. So don't get too limited to sub D. Try using different strategies. Try using these intersection booleans and playing with different shapes. Try using lattice, try using just naturally organic and curvy shapes like cylinders and spheres. You can use that and get some pretty clean results as well. So quick little video here, hope it gave you some ideas. I didn't want to make this video too long. It's a pretty basic strategy, but something that is still worth mentioning. So hope the video helped you out here and I'll see you in the next one.